So I am going to talk about the Lambda destination feature, and uh, the use case would be so. Um, generally, when we do any asynchronous uh, invocation uh, to the Lambda, right? Uh, the way it behaves is that uh, uh, it immediately gives you the response back uh, when you trigger it from maybe from DynamoDB or from SQS. It will give you the response back with the 200 that it has been successfully invoked the Lambda function. There is the way asynchronous call works, and then uh, it separates out the you know the actual process of the lambda function to execute in the lambda execution environment, and uh, what happens in that execution is not goes back to the you know the caller that is it successfully processed or not. So those kind of information is missing. You will all, the caller will always get the 200 that I have successfully invoked the lambda function, but behind the scene if it fails, then they don't know what is happening, right? So that was the one major use case which they were targeting, and but around that uh, they they were solving some other minor use cases also. Like if it is a very small uh, lambda calling to SQS, and then uh, an, another lambda is picking that event from the SQS. So if you have a small kind, uh, event driven architecture, if you want to implement, that can also be solved by this uh, without doing much coding around it. Because let's uh, if, if we go with the existing setup of the lambda. Uh, if you want to put an event message on the queue uh, from the Lambda function, once you are done with the, your processing, then uh, you have to manually code uh, to uh, create the connection to the SQS, put the message over there, and then another Lambda function will come and pick up the message and then uh, process and then do further processing. That was a lot of manual coding, retry, failure, exception ending you have to manage in that case also. So that is also being targeted by this uh, service actually. And it is being also compared with the step function uh, because a step function is also used to coordinate um, your multiple components uh, in a state machine flow way, right? So I will talk about that comparison also, what it does, why it does. So let me first talk how it works. This one, okay? So what I've done is I've created two uh, lambda function. One is destination first, and the other one is destination success. So first we'll be making a call to the success one when it gets successfully uh, executed okay and on the failure what i have done is i have triggered a sns uh, topic so that will send an email to me um, once uh, the uh, execution fails for this step okay so let me go there so if you look at this lambda function earlier if you remember um, when we have this uh, function screen you used to have here the permission things like if you are giving uh, IAM rules uh, Lambda function to ex uh, you know have the access to the cloud watch or uh, your S3 bucket and all they used to come here. Now there is a slight change in the menu and they have created the new tab called permission. So all your access related things have gone to the permission tab. So here you can see what all the permission you have for this Lambda function. So this Lambda function I just use the existing my uh, IAM role, so it might have multiple access right now. So this Lambda function has access to the execute to the another Lambda function. It has access to the X-ray. It has access to the CloudWatch, S3, and SNS as well. You can select any of them, and then it will give you details what kind of action it can do on this X-ray, right? So all those details are coming very nicely. Earlier it was not there. So this is one new feature has come. You can even click on the view role JSON and it will give you nicely JSON where it tells which all the roles, what all the actions you can do on uh, just all the services which you have the access, right? So that is one feature has come uh, as a separate tab. Now if you go back to the configuration, so replacing the permission from here to that new tab and then this new uh, feature has come here, add destination, okay? So if you go to that destination, now there are one uh, few things to um, know how it works. The first thing is that Lambda destination works only with the, these kind of two events. One is asynchronous invocation and one is stream invocation. So it will not work for the synchronous invocation. So if you are making a call to the, your Lambda function from the uh, your API gateway or from ALB, it will not trigger uh, this Lambda destination. So that is not meant for the synchronous call that we need to know. And that is one comparison you can do with the step function, which you can do in the step function, but not in the lambda destination. Now here also, 
we have two condition based on that you can trigger the destination. One is on failure and one is on success. So failure means when you are uh, getting any error uh, in your uh, logs, right? So when you throw any exception or any error, then it will identify that error and then it will trigger that destination. So destination works is just you have to give the ARN of that value. Uh, so again, here the destination can be only these four services. The first one is SQSQ, then SNS, and then Lambda and Event Bridge, uh, Event Bus. So it is limited to only these four services. If you compare this with the step function, step function can connect to any service, any AWS service or even non AWS service also it can connect to. So that's where this is different. Okay. One more thing is that about condition. So here it can connect only to two uh, based on the two condition only you can do on failure or on success. So let, let's suppose if your Lambda function is executing and giving you different type of responses. Let's suppose if I get a response one, then I want to call the another Lambda function one. If I get the response two, I want to call the another Lambda function two. That it will not do that. It has only failure and success way of doing it. Okay, uh, but in a step function, and uh, let me just open there. Uh, step function also I have opened here. So in a step function, you have a feature called uh, what you call choice state, right? So in choice state, you can define what all you want to do. You can have multiple uh, choices also. So if you say that my uh, variable foo is equal to one, then I want to call this state, and in this state, you can make your uh, lambda function or uh, x y z anything right if your value is coming to then you can do this step right so it can have multiple choices you can give it but in lambda destination we have only two choices success and failure okay uh, that is one uh, thing and uh, one more problem i observed is that uh, uh, there can be only one condition for the failure also so let's suppose uh, in this function right I already have a uh, failure defined. Let me show you that quickly. Uh, so as I said earlier, for the uh, success, I am triggering the another Lambda function. So if I click on that, it will show that on success, I am triggering this Lambda function. Okay, and failure, I am triggering this uh, SNS. Okay. But what if I go there and try to create another uh, destination with the failure? It will actually override the existing one without giving you any alert and warning. That is the one bug I feel it is there because user will not know that it has overridden the existing one. Uh, one more thing I observed here is this test feature. Okay, so most of the developer are used to um, test the Lambda function using the test button, right? You will set up this uh, events here, configure the test events here and then trigger it. But I, I found it out that this test is going to make a synchronous call to the Lambda function and that's the reason it is not triggering the destination. So you're, you cannot test the uh, asynchronous call uh, from the this test button. So if you want to test the Lambda destination, you have to test it through the AWS CLI or the actual event from the DynamoDB or SQS from where, where you want to trigger this. So that's the way test to be triggered, okay. So, okay. so now let me just quickly trigger that uh, function and then see how it works. So first time doing it with the success. Okay, as I said, I have to do through AWS CLI only to trigger that function. So I'm triggering this function. It is, I'm just passing it as a success parameter as a true. So once it is success, it will, it is going to uh, trigger the another Lambda function, which I defined as a destination here as a Lambda function, this one, okay. So it is going to call this destination success. So it's invoking it. And uh, let me go to the logs. So this is what it has come, okay? If you see, this is the uh, success true has come. Now, this is supposed to eventually trigger the destination success function. So let's go there and then see if that has come or not. So let's go to the destination success. And here, if you see the logs, so this has been triggered also now. Okay. Now, the one important thing we need to see here is that when this is triggered, you will get the request payload also and the response payload also here. So, this is telling you that when you made a request to the destination first method, what payload you passed it, it is passing me that also. And what is the response? It is there. Uh, that is also it is passing. Okay. So, 
this way you can get what are the execution lambda has done what is the response has come that will come to your next service destination service and then you can put what are the logic you want to do based on that response but let me put it for the false also now so in false as i said that um, there will be retry attempt also uh, to retry attempt will be there as a, it is defined uh, once <clears throat> these two attempts happens uh, then only it will go to the sns and then trigger the uh, email functionality so if i go to the sns this topic i have created right uh, so this topic is created and it is going to send email to me as a subscriber okay so this is going to trigger that email so again in the failure case also it is working that way uh, i think it takes time actually for it to trigger that email but uh, definitely we can see the logs that if it is failed or not failed so i think it is still old So uh, retry also will be happening every one minute of break. So you will see the failure. See this first event has come right, and that has come at the 5:28 only. So uh, next one will be happening the 5:29. So we have to wait for one more minute to retry that attempt. And once it fails, then it will trigger the uh, SNS. So if I show you the email also, uh, just to in the morning I just tested it, so it should show that uh, here. This kind of SNS email will come, and here also, if you see that it will give us the you know response contest, its response payload, and everything. So based on that, you can take a uh, you know, you can put the logic to uh, do what are the action you want to do based on the failure. So overall, my experience says that it is very good for a small use cases uh, where you want to have only two or three uh, lambda function. uh which one which you want to use for the event driven flow uh, this is very good uh, here you don't need to write a code to connect to your sqs or lambda function it is readily available and it has a retry attempt also which you can do that uh, i have documented also few things with comparison of this type function so first thing is that uh, lambda destination supports only async and stream invocation but step function uh, supports the sync and async both flow right uh, because it we just need to call the start execution api which you can call it either sync way or async way also uh, services support again this is supporting only four and uh, yeah one more thing we just go to the destination if if i put the stream invocation right we talked about this asynchronous invocation if we go to the stream invocation it will limit you to only to these two stream right and uh, this is what aw support kinesis and dynamo db stream right uh, the difference here is that now the condition has only the own failure there is no success so they don't want to scale uh, sns topic and the uh, sqs infinitely because it it may go to the you know infinite in, uh, scalability and it can give problem so that's why they said they are going only for the own failure only not for the success so on failure you can call this and again here it is limited to sqs and sns there is no lambda and uh, event bridge service here so that is the difference in stream invocation also then step function we can call any service uh, it supports many other aws service the another difference i found is that branching so you don't have other than those on failure and on success condition we uh, but in step function we do have parallel mechanism where you can uh, trigger the parallel processing of two you know uh, parallel call one one call happen to the lambda one call happen to the sqs in parallel so that parallel mechanism is there uh, similarly the choice we already discussed that uh, here we have only two choices on failure on success but here you can do uh, many other choices you can plan retry again uh, in the retry uh, we have seen only that maximum two numbers of the retry you can do you can configure you can do cannot do more than two but here you it is configurable you can do more than that and here it gives you option of the back off rate also which you can you know exponentially increase your difference before you make the next attempt uh, for the retry so that is the way this step function provides more features uh, compared to this so depending on the use case uh, we can take a call that if you want to use uh, lambda destination or the step function and this we already talked about that test feature does not help you to test this one that is my observation 
and another ob observation about is that uh, uh, condition thing, right? So uh, that is a limitation also I talked about. So these are two observation I would talk. So that's it for this session of lambda destination. Uh, please leave your feedback in the comment section. Thank you very much.